Hey guys, Richard at Riding Zoom here. Got my arm in the way because the bloody sunlight is uh, causing a bit of a glare, which I realised during Series 5 filming is just getting too much. So, on to it then. So, Series 6 of Doctor Who, which follows on immediately from uh, Series 5. And as you can see, River's on the cover because she has a much bigger role in this series. And yep, yeah, Series 6 is very different from 5. So, it's got the same sort of structure as Series 5 um, in terms of you know the Doctor companion, or this time, you know, second companion who are a married couple now. And Amy treats Warrior a hell of a lot better, so yeah, you'll uh, definitely appreciate that much more. But it's definitely changing things around a bit. So the series opens with, a, after the Christmas episode, opens with a two-parter. Um, you've got a mid-series break, although from what I hear that was the BBC's decision and not uh, the Doc Sue team. And then the finale is actually just a one-parter with obviously just the last few minutes of the second last episode tying into it. So very different, and it's also going for a much more, like I mentioned Series 5, not a lot of it wasn't scared that scary you know incredible series fresh of breath air after um 2008 and 9 but this one definitely goes back to more of a uh, horror tom baker well, one of tom well, one or two of tom baker's uh, era uh, style i mean it's also very very x-files influence and i know it can be a problem some people don't like that it's you know moving into x-files ish and of course after series five being a bit like light-hearted fairy tale as well and of course it's um also going down, what did I say? It's X-Files influence, like filming in America. Yeah, so basically, spoiler just for series two and a couple of extra ones of the X-Files. Basically, the ginger-haired friend gets abducted by aliens, is experimented on, and then she eventually ends up giving birth. In this, Amy is already pregnant, as something like British confirmed to be on their wedding night in TARDIS, which causes like a time, a half-time old, half-human child. And of course, she gets abducted, so that and that child is experimented on, and that child is then used as a weapon. So it's definitely similar to what happens to Agent Scully in X Files. So yeah, along with the X Files ness, like filming in America as well, or conspiracy, the silence of these like black suited aliens, and um, it's also just a different feel completely. And which is good, you know, Doctor Who needs to change because you could argue that Rusty Davies is four full years other than the Doctor change and a companion change each year, follow the exact same structure each time, and. Clearly, Steve Moffat is not trying to do that. It's going to be as different as possible. So, yeah, so plenty of one-off episodes, but the this is a big issue, actually. It, I mean, it didn't matter to me so much because, frankly, iPlayer existed back then, but when I was working in 2011, I missed a lot of episodes through work and um, or just doing other things. Like, I could watch them, but this series is so story arc heavy. Like, series, which even series five and then the previous four all followed, like, one thing as the story arc. So, um Bad Wolf in Series 1, Tortured Series 2, uh, Cracks in Time in Series 5. In this, it's, yeah, something to do with something, some enemy called The Silence. Do this catchphrase, Silence Will Fall. And the beginning being the ending. The Doctor is killed on this beach in America. And although he, it happens in the beginning, of, like the first episode, but it turns out that's him in the future, 200 years later. It still looks the same. Um... And it's basically, it's going to be him at the end of the series getting gunned down. And it's fairly, like, how's the Doctor going to stop it? And it didn't have the best, uh, the best, uh, like, reception to us. I don't know how it ever could have done. So, yeah, the main story arc is that sort of thing. And, of course, all these episodes tying in it. So, Amy has this pregnancy scan reading pregnant, not pregnant. So, it turns out she's abducted. And there's, like, this, like, flesh avatar copy of her. Ah, oh, that's taking my arm too much. I'm going to have to stop that. Apologies for this, guys. I've really got to try and film this somewhere else okay so yeah so uh mid series finale is like that um they go into this factory where people make liquid copies of themselves just to do dangerous jobs and not harm themselves and it turns out that's what happens. amy a copy of her was made that way and then you've got how the doctor is going to get around it so some of the best episodes have no connection but some of the worst do as well so the pirate episode is just really poor and playing on the rory died once let's have it happen again and he survives but then you've got the Doctor's wife where the TARDIS is given a human body and it's absolutely amazing. So I kind of argue with that. But um, so yeah, it is strange that some, sometimes the, the disconnected episodes are the best. Um, and even ones that are, that seem disconnected aren't. For example, the um, God Complex and a hotel everyone sees their greatest fears. It's quite implied the Doctor is seeing himself. And Amy's greatest fear is the Doctor. If her waiting for the Doctor will never come back. And he realises he, can, he can't put her... Or any of his friends in danger, so he chooses to be by himself again. And so, same with closing time, the finale, you know, the doctor's just going about his business, having fun, being his old friends, but then it ties to the ending when he realizes he can't just keep 
avoiding what's going to happen. And yet, yeah, great shout out to the Brigadier, the actor who played the Brigadier in uh, Pax Trans Era onwards. You know, the actor actually died and actually wrote it into the episode. It was great, the Doctor planned to ignore his future until he's realised, you know, not everyone does live forever like he can and accepts his death. But yeah, of course, he, there's basically giant robots that you can shrink yourself into and sort of be in there. So the Doctor fakes his death so it looks like he died and therefore time doesn't get destroyed. Um, so yeah, I like Series 6, but it's very story arc heavy and you've got to be really invested. And ultimately you need to watch pretty much every episode, otherwise you're not going to know what's going on. I think that can be an issue. Won't really be the case of Series 7, but it is here. So yeah, good series. Focus as well on the horror, like the silence. You know, like I said in a previous video that that um, the screw, you know, ghost face on the screen or like the, you know, the, uh, you know, that one. Um, and they're like dressed in these like waterlogged black suits. They like wipe your memory the second you look away. No one is immune, not even Daleks. Daleks actually make a cameo. Um, so this is one of the things I like about series, actually. They're making, like, the classic villains, Cybermen, Daleks, etc. Pretty just one-off characters. Like, they're not building the whole series threats around them like Rusty Davies had a, had a habit of doing. They're just kind of there. Like, they're not... It's big stars stuff to anyone. They benefit so much. Because I hated it in Rusty Davies era how all the Daleks would die, but one would get away. And then they would just repeat it over and over. You know, series five finally had them. You know, not have that happen. You know, they even admit their plan is to run away because they won't risk being wiped out again. And thank God, because it was getting really unbelievable that all these lives are gone. Nope, they're back it's again. And it just, no, it was a bad, bad move. But yeah, that's one thing I like. Although, so I did give them a horrendous redesign, but they quickly went back to the originals quite quickly. Um, but yeah, Series 6 just kind of continues good work from 5, changes it over, and goes a totally new style, like a two-part series opener, a one-part ending. And they made the mid-series break work as well as they could. Oh, and you get the other mystery who River is. Because you see a little girl at the beginning is trying to kill the Doctor. And then a teenager and then a teenage girl and then River. So, yeah, it works there. It's a good series, but it's not terrible for everyone's like, liking. And I can see why. So, yeah, that's it. I'll see you for the next one.